I'm Paula Eben. And I'm meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope that everyone is enjoying this weather and enjoying yeah. this special day. Such an eerie sight. The sky is changing just a little bit in our mm -hmm. area. What are your impressions so far? We've seen other cities in totality already. Yeah, it's been really neat to take it in watching the coverage mm -hmm. of, you know, people and crews in, in Texas and across the United yeah. States in that path of totality. But I'm happy that I just got a chance. I've been kind of yeah. going in and out of the studio with the glasses on to just look up with those glasses and see the partial eclipse starting. It's amazing how perfectly symmetrical mm -hmm. it is also when you watch this, just remarkable. We have a shot from Sky Eye just before noontime that tells the story of just how many people are trying to see the eclipse today. This is 93 North in Hooksett, New Hampshire, backed up for miles as hundreds of people headed up to the Granite State for today's event. And you know, this is one of those events, Jason and I were discussing at noontime, Yes, it will happen again in two years or so in Europe, mm -hmm. but this is the last time it will happen here where we can view it with our own eyes till 2079. Yeah. So it is history. About 55 years. So yeah. this is the time to really take it in. And I think that people, we were, we, we were talking about it, you know, all last week, all this weekend, so much coverage on it, yeah. but I think it really hit home like over the weekend. And even today I was getting texts from people yeah. about the glasses, where can I get them? And even just walking around, I feel like I, I passed a few people holding the glasses yeah. this morning, ready to go. Oh, they were ready. It's, it's exciting. People on Boston Common, yeah. uh, near Bunnell we're good. in Charlestown. Right. A lot of schools are either allowing students to get out early or hosting after school events so that children and older students can have a chance to see the eclipse. And we have another shot here, as you can see. Kids are out. Oh no, we're we're just looking here. That's uh, Tupper, Lake, Tupper New York Lake, New York, and Lancaster, New Hampshire. So we're looking wow. at these latest shots. Just amazing to see how it just creeps across that way, Alexa. Yeah, and it's one of those things that I mean, everyone from across the country can take part in and, and yeah. watch and look up at. You know, assuming you have those glasses, and it's really neat to kind of in the middle of the day, just pause and see what is happening and experience science. Yeah, we want to go to uh, Mike Sullivan now, who's been in Lancaster, New Hampshire. Starting this morning when we first spoke, Mike, people were flocking up there. And uh, this is just a once in a lifetime experience for so many people. It absolutely is a once in a lifetime experience, especially if you could get up here. We talked to some people who stayed 30 minutes away and it took them three hours to get here. We are just minutes away from totality. If I'm able to look up, we have just a sliver of sun left that is up there. We just getting our filter on top of our camera so you can see what we are looking at. We are getting very close. Our totality should be somewhere around about 327 at that point we should be able to take the filter off and look at the sun along with everybody else here what's very odd here at Lancaster is it has been fairly warm all day and right now it's very cold I feel very cold and kind of want to put another coat on but I know once totality ends and the sun passes through it's going to warm up here again and there's a lot of people out here who are going and looking and looking up at the sky we're going to talk to some of them right now we don't have to take them off. We can still look up. I mean, okay. we're going to safely make this. This is pretty, this is really <laughs> amazing. This is very exciting. All right, so what are you looking at? What do you see? I am seeing, it almost looks like a crescent of moon, but it's a crescent of the sun. It's really tiny. It's like, it's like a new moon kind of thing, and it's, it's, it's pretty special. And when you, look, when you look at the sky around, you're not looking up there. It's almost like you're in a car, and you've got tinted glass in the car. It's just a little bit yeah. darker. It, it's very, very cool. It's sort of eerie just around here. Like the light, you expect there to be sun, but it's just like, it's dim. It's sort of bluish almost. It's, yeah. it's really, yeah, it's cool. And who are you here with? Who's the rest of your, okay, the rest of your family? My, my grandson, Timmy, my daughter, Wendy, and my grandson, Corey. Now, you guys hopefully are around for the next one, which is 2079, but is this a, a moment that you didn't want to miss? 2079. 2079. I thought that's a little ways off, but I, I think I think I'm done with my 20 years from now. I'm, it'd be nice if I'm around. But they might. I mean, you guys I'm might hoping, be around for yeah, it, and my daughter hopefully be around. I beg to see the next one. It'd be so fun. I love seeing eclipse. You'd be all grown up by then. <laughs> you might have your you might have your own kids by then. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I think we're getting pretty close. Yeah, I'd say. it's, it's like very it. cool. Very exciting. I must look. We're going to give you, uh, we'll try and give you another look at what we're looking at because I know we're getting very, very, very close to the time. Oh, yeah. He's almost there. 
Yeah, we're about two minutes out. At that point, we should be in totality for about 40 to 50 seconds. So what we want to do is put our glasses on, as, well, right about now, so you can watch and look up at the sky. But as soon as totality happens, we'll be taking them off and then putting them back on right when totality ends. And the key is to be able to sort of put them on late and take them off early, because as soon as that sun peeks through the side, you're going to feel it and it's going to hit your eyes and they can cause damage. But once we hit totality, which again is about a minute away, we'll be able to take that lens off. And what you'll see is sort of a glowing ring that'll happen around the sun and around the moon, including some little markings that'll come around the edge. They're called Bailey's beads. That's where the sun hits all the crevices and and, and valleys that are in the moon because it's not smooth and perfectly symmetrical. So you'll see all these little dots and that's the sun hitting that. But right before totality, there'll also be what they call the diamond. It's a big sort of ray that shoots, shoots through right when we hit that totality mark. But we still have a tiny little sliver to go. But people around here are all sort of just taking it in. And people have been here for hours. People started showing up here as, as early as 9 o'clock in the morning. And realistically, if you were going to get up here, you probably needed to leave early. We left Boston in the area around 5, 5.30. And we made it up here about 9 o'clock. But again, there were other people who stayed a half an hour away. And it took them three hours to break through traffic. And I have to assume traffic as we head back will also be pretty difficult. I've heard areas of Burlington, which might have about three minutes or so of totality, People were booking up places a year ago. Stowe, which is just outside of Burlington, they had 99% occupancy in that area just days ago. Everyone trying to get up here to take, to take a view. And again, if you're in Massachusetts and you are trying to watch this, you need to have your glasses on all the time because you are not in that totality zone like we are. We are so close. It's just a tiny sliver. And I can hear people behind me, everyone is gasping and saying, oh my God, oh my gosh, as they try and, and, and look at this. And we are getting up to totality. I just took my glasses off, which I shouldn't do, but did, uh, looking at the sky and it actually didn't hurt that bad, which is surprising. So we must be really close to see again that diamond. That's when you know you've hit totality. It'll be this big sphere of light uh, on one side of where the eclipse happens. And then we'll have 40 to 50 seconds of a phenomenon. It is starting to get much colder here too. As I mentioned just a few minutes ago, I was starting to feel it and wanted to put another jacket on, but now it's really starting to get cold and it's really starting to get dark everywhere around here. You can, you can see almost a sunset over the, the mountains that are in the distance. It's just a very interesting moment and we are about to hit it just momentarily. And also, once you hit totality, there are other things that you will be able to see. So Venus, Jupiter, there's a few other stars that should be around it. And we are almost to totality, just that tiny little bit. I don't know if you can hear everyone around me, the oohs and the ahs, as we start to hit this point. At this point, I'm taking the glasses off. And I have no words. That's beautiful. You've got the full ring. And you've still got some of those beads, as I was mentioning, around the edges and that sort of sunspot you see down at the bottom. And it is night here. <laughs> For the most part, everything we're looking at is dark. I'm guessing we probably have about 30 more seconds of this before we all have to put our glasses on. And we shared this moment together just briefly. And then it'll be over. It happens that quick. But again, if you're in other parts of, of northern New England, you will have much, much more time. But for us, we're just going to enjoy these 40 to 50 seconds. All I hear is, it's amazing. This is phenomenal. It's hard to describe. It's really something that you have to witness. Well, you can see it's starting to peak on the side. So at some point, we're going to have to put these glasses back on. Yeah, we're starting to see the sun peek out again from the corner. 
And some of those, again, those Bailey's beads are starting to pop a little more as it's starting to hit those crevices that are in the moon. And now at this point, you basically have to have your glasses on <laughs> and everybody is cheering all around here. And that's it. That's how quickly it happens. <laughs> Well, guys, we are going to stay up here a little bit longer, talk to some people that, again, just witnessed history, and uh, you won't witness it again until 2079. But uh, it's, been, it's been wonderful, and, and I'm glad that we were able to share this moment with you guys and everybody else here. Back to you. Amazing to see you partially in the dark there, Mike. Great play-by-play -play of a historic moment. Thank you so much. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of it. Uh, and we heard, as Mike was saying, there are so many people you could hear school children yeah. around him saying, that's so cool. A lot of schools are either letting students get out early or hosting an after-school event to give students a chance to see the eclipse and learn. And as you see here, uh, kids are enjoying the eclipse. We have shots of St. Augustine School in Andover. I don't know if we have that right now, but one of the schools that is turning this into such a great lesson day is Conservatory Lab Charter School in Dorchester. That's where we find WBZ's Christina Hager live at the school's parking lot. Christina? Hi, Paula. How cool is this? This is so fun. This is an after-school activity for these kids. And uh, I heard in Mike's live shot lots of oohs and odds. We had cheers here. Totality, of course, but 93% turns out is pretty impressive. We all have our glasses. They've been giving them out here. Some kids have been coloring them in. There are academic lessons here, and there's a stand set up where they're measuring luminosity during this. There are there's a, a big projector box set up where people can kind of look in and see the crescent reflecting back. Uh, I mean, look at all the activity here. There's a big dragon puppet in the background. It'll come around again. It's a big red dragon puppet. A nod to those ancient beliefs that the gods and a dragon were swallowing up the sun. And these kids in the classroom have been learning about the history of all that, those, those ancient beliefs and how we now know of so much more about the science behind all of this and the moon crossing over the sun. Uh, it's really to see even still now I'm watching just that crescent that slurm uh, and everybody making sure this is done safely now this is the conservatory school lots of arts and there's a big focus on music and integrating that in the learning here so after all of this the kids are going to file into the building and there's going to be a music production and a drama production and they're going to share all of this and you know the eclipse soundtrack here is going to be on point. Kids have been talking about how they feel like this might be a once in a lifetime experience for them in terms of, you know, having these perfect conditions, the percentage and uh, the clear skies and the fact that we're able to see this much here in, Bo in New England and in Boston in their own backyard right here at school. And so they want to make sure that this is an experience they'll be able to talk about for years and years to come. And it seems like this school has done everything they can to make it worthy of this event. Here comes that dragon again. It's great. This is the art class that created this dragon as they were learning all about this and the history behind it. Paula, sending it back to you. Christina Hager, thank you so much. A moment those children will likely never forget. Fun school memory. And we were saying, Mike mentioned a few moments ago, the temperature drops. And you've had recorded temperature drops in Boston yeah, as well. Yeah, we were kind of curious if Boston, even with that partial eclipse, was going to start to see a drop. And yeah. what, since it started, Boston went from 66 degrees to 64. So it did drop two degrees. There was also a mm -hmm. two degree drop in Dallas and Indianapolis. So wow. it's really neat to see how this affects the weather. And you know, you've heard about it affecting animals and insects and all of that. And 
I mean, just from both of those live shots. Oh, yeah. Hearing you, everyone. Hearing the kids, hearing the excitement. And yeah, you can imagine the chill in the air right away. Yeah. It's, it's an eerie experience overall. Um, here we have some really fun uh, shots of students out enjoying the eclipse at the St. Augustine School in Andover. They were sharing a song singing You Are My Sunshine while they enjoyed the show in the sky. So we said teachers making a lot of memories today, making this fun for students and great science classes. Uh, WBZ's Paul Burton is at the Ecotarium in Worcester. And Paul, what are you seeing there? And uh, people must be excited to see the eclipse as it's happening, just passing totality now. That was live on Absolutely. We just witnessed a majestic moment in history here at the Ecotarium Museum of Science and Nature. I'm here with the CEO and President Noreen Smith. Describe what we just saw here and how many people came to witness this at your place. This was awesome. We had about 2,000 visitors come in and crowd the Sundial Plaza. People started cheering when it got to as close as we're going to get in this area for totality. And you can tell the air changed. It's freezing all of a sudden because the sun has gone out partially. What, so. does this, what does this mean to you, knowing the, the business that you're in, and to have it here at this moment in time? We won't capture this again. We won't. We won't capture it again until 2078. I'm pretty sure I won't be here for it. And it's great as a science museum to be able to see so many people excited about science because this is the science of our Earth and we're just the perfect spot to view it from. And describe what happened today with the sundial terrace here, right? Yes, we had six telescopes out. And the public has been coming up to our museum educators and they've had a chance to look through the solar filter on a variety of different telescopes as well as a viewfinder that does functions like a pinhole box. Um, and we've had activities all around the Sundial Plaza to educate the public about the, the movement of the moon and the sun and the stars and everything today. You know, and I watched you. You're like a little kid out here. I know. I, I saw you. You put on the glasses every three seconds. What's this like for you? This is awesome. I remember seeing an eclipse when I was young, and it's been a long time since I've been in the right place on the globe for uh, to be in the path of even partial totality. So it's been tremendously fun. And lastly, what do you want kids to walk away with? Because I have a student I'm about to introduce in one second. Awesome. I think it, that's what today is all about, is getting the kids excited. And I want the kids to walk away with a desire to learn more and a desire to get a telescope, maybe join a program, get to know a little more about the Earth and the moon and stars. And that's what we're here for. Well, Noreen, come on, come on over here. Uh, this is Kaylin. Kaylin, you're how old? Nine. You're nine years old, and what grade are you in? Fourth grade. You're in the fourth grade in what school? Our Lady of the Angels. You love school? Yeah. And you love learning? Yeah. Describe what you just saw. What does this day mean for you? This day is a special day because this only happens about one, about in 100 years. And it's beautiful. What was it like when you put on the glasses? It what was, did you see? Describe it. It was like... It was the moon covering the sun, and it looked very cool. Good. And are you guys talking about it in school? What have you guys been talking about? We've been talking about how solar eclipses only happen in a few years, and we were also learning about lunar eclipses and total eclipses. And you, you, you learned a lot today, didn't you? Yeah. Who are you here with? I'm here with my dad and my brother. Awesome. And you'll never forget it? Yeah. All right. And that's the lessons that we're learning from young people, the CEO here, they're taking it all in. More, more than 2,000 visitors came here, this, and they've been here since early this morning, camping out and taking it all in. Live in Worcester, I'm Paul Burton, WBZ News. Yeah, we love the Ecotarium in Worcester. Paul, thank you. WBZ Chief Meteorologist Eric Fisher headed to Texas for a chance to see the eclipse, and here is what happened when he saw totality with his son, Miles. All right, we just got totality here at Hamilton, Texas, a little southwest of Dallas. This is Miles, my son. What do you think, Miles? That was amazing. <laughs> so obviously another uh, a science fan, would you say? Yeah. So what was the coolest part? Probably the diamond ring. The diamond ring? Literally, like, you could see the first part of it without the glasses, but then, like, as it got bigger, you had to put your glasses back on. Yeah, it was so cool. We got great conditions. The clouds disappeared. We talked about how when there's extra solar radiation that gets lost when the eclipse starts, the cumulus clouds start to dissipate. It's what happened here. It was perfect, right? Yep. Cool. So what would you say to everyone else? People might watch this later on today. 
Strawberry eclipses are awesome. <laughs> Hope and dads are the best. <laughs> dads are the best. Words to live by. Hope everyone has a great experience along the path today. Great moment for them to always remember. Yeah. Dads are the best. And clearly, Miles took it in and yes. also appreciated, you know, Eric bringing him and his, his whole family there for I it. Loved I mean, that. It, it's kind of an emotional moment, I think, for a lot mm. of people. And to be able to experience that with your kids yeah. and your family, your friends is just, yeah. I think uh, Eric also tweeted saying epic. Yeah, it was epic. epic. Well, that's the thing. The time limitation mm -hmm. of this does always make it feel like such a special moment for families. And as you say, at sort of the last moment, people think, oh, yeah, I, I got to get outside and see yeah. that. So we want to go to meteorologist Alyssa Andrews, who didn't make it all the way to Texas, but she went home to her home state of Indiana. And she joins us now with a look at the eclipse from Indy. Alyssa? We just experienced a total solar eclipse, 100% in the path of totality, lucky enough, right in my parents' backyard. And we were able to take the glasses off during those four minutes of totality. And I'll tell you what, they've got a lot of birds in their backyard. The birds started to quiet down. It got dark and the whole time it was just filtering light all the way up until the 100% eclipse. Our temperatures dropped to over seven degrees. We've got a Kestrel out here measuring our temperature drop and it just started to quiet. And it was an experience unlike any other. I was in 98% totality back in 2017. This one was 100%. I tell you what, you can't even compare the two. It was night and day, an experience I will never forget. From Greenwood, Indiana, I'm meteorologist Alyssa Andrews. Meteorologists fanned out across the country to uh, take this all in for us. And you know, the weather was definitely looking dicey. I it mean, was, yeah. we were a little nervous watching where Eric was going and Jacob and Alyssa with some storms around and yeah. some clouds. We had the best of you, but I mean, it, it's, it worked out. Glad the it cooperated clouds, yeah. in the end. Well, this concludes our solar eclipse coverage. I'm Paula Evan. And I'm meteorologist Lexi O'Connor. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Have a good afternoon. We'll send you back to more news and weather.